Okay, next we'll talk about plain mirrors. <clears throat> it's what you use to shave or put on your makeup in the morning. Uh, we've got two concepts to uh, locate the image of, formed by a plain mirror to understand that image and to also talk about real versus virtual images. All right, so if we have a plain mirror and we have a chess piece and we're interested in a, a ray of light that leaves the top corner of this chess piece. And this is important where uh, when we're trying to figure out what, what the image looks like, we need to pick out a particular point on the object of interest. And the object is this chess piece in this case. And the point of interest on that object is the top right corner of the chess piece. Okay, so it heads toward the mirror it bounces off in a specular reflection uh, with the angle of incidence equaling the angle of reflection. And so what happens as, as far as how we're going to form an image? Well, if your eye is here, the light ray that your eye sees is the one that's shown here in red. But your eye, from his perspective, is seeing that light ray come into him and it's as if your eye perceives that the ray comes from behind the mirror. Where's the image formed? Well, if we consider all of the light rays leaving that top right corner of the chess piece and, and heading out in, in all directions. So we've got light rays that go um, in all directions starting at the top right corner of the chess piece but only some of those light rays are going to be intercepted by the eye. This one here is going to hit the mirror and, and then head off to, to Timbuktu and your eye is not going to see that one. But shown here are two light rays that actually are able to enter the eye, both light rays leaving the top right corner of the chest piece. Well, where do they appear to come from as far as the eye is concerned? Well, the eye says, I've got these two rays coming toward me, and they're getting further and further apart. Where do they come from? Well, they, uh, they appear to come from that top left corner of what will be a virtual image. So, and that image, as you can see, by, by symmetry, is going to be the same distance from the mirror as the object itself is from the mirror. So, the ray seems to come from behind the mirror, but it actually comes from in front of the mirror. And this is where uh, real and virtual s suddenly are starting to, to make some sense. A real image is formed when all of the light, leaving a point on the object, so here would be this top right point on the object, arrives at a corresponding point on the image. Well, this light, leaving the top right corner, doesn't actually arrive <laughs> at this image. So it's not going to be a real image. It's just the extensions of the light that appear to emanate from the image. So a virtual image is formed when all of the light leaving a point on the object, okay, here's the point on the object again, seems to originate from a corresponding point on the image, though the light rays that form the image do not reach the image. Okay, so these these light rays here form the image, but they're not real. They're just extensions of these actual um, of actual light rays. So this is a virtual image. The, the light leaving that point on that object appears to originate from a single point on the image. And when we talk about making images, both on um, flat mirrors and curved mirrors, it will always be a point on the object and a corresponding point on the image. If each point on the object, the light leaving there, um, arrives at the same point in the image, it's a real image. If it appears to originate from the same point on the image, then it is a virtual image. Okay, so uh, draw the light rays to locate and characterize the image, either real or virtual, 
upright or inverted, enlarged or reduced, so we'll, or unmagnified, produced by a plane mirror. So this is, um, and we'll introduce the, the upright inverted stuff uh, and enlarged reduced. So here's the mirror. And we're going to draw just a center line right smack through, the, dab through the, the middle of the mirror. And then we're going to consider an object. So I will denote objects by O. O means object. And then we're going to look at some light rays to see if we can locate the image. And we're not going to worry too much about where our eye is placed. So we could put our eye here, 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 or here. I just want to look at the light rays emanating from the very tip of this object. So imagine this being the chest piece and the top of this arrow being the top right corner of the chest piece. So I want to look at, at particular um, light rays. Let me take this one that goes straight horizontally toward the vertical mirror. Well, what does it do when it reflects from the mirror? Well, you say, well, that's pretty easy because the angle between that light ray and the perpendicular to the mirror is zero. And so the incident ray is going to, the reflected ray is going to just go back on top of the incident ray. It's going to reflect back like that. So that's what that one does. What about this one that hits right here? So that one hits right into the central line. Its angle of incidence equals its angle of reflection. So he's going to look like that, with this angle e equaling that angle. And let's draw another one, just for, uh, just for fun. Let's put one up that goes up like this. So we've got light rays that go in all directions, starting from the top of that chest piece. But we're interested in the ones that actually get intercepted by the mirror. Well, this one hits the mirror and bounces off with an angle of incidence equal an angle, the angle of reflection. Well, here's one reflected ray, here's another, and here's another. They're all heading and they're diverging. They're not converging. We want to find a place where they appear to converge. And the way that we do that is that we just extend this out. And we appear to find an image, just like with a chess piece, but I want you to be able to draw these diagrams. This is the first of five such diagrams that we'll do in this chapter. And what you can see is by symmetry, this image, which I'll denote with a capital I, appears to be the same height as the object. And how do you know that? Well, you know that because this, this ray this one right here, that's extended over here, has to um, intercept this tipping, the, the point of this image, and that therefore must be the height of the object. So this, is, this image is unmagnified. Meaning the image is the same size as the object. Okay, it's unmagnified. Is it real or virtual? You say, well, it's virtual. We already talked about that because the actual rays don't, don't come from or pass through the image. So it's a virtual image. All images in a flat mirror are virtual. Um, so we've got this part. It's not enlarged or reduced, but it is unmagnified. It is virtual. And is it upright or inverted? All that means is that um, here's the object, and it's above this central axis here. So it's an upright object. The image, the virtual image, is also upright. It's not flipped over, as we'll see in some other cases. So it's an upright image. So 
Flat plane mirrors form images that are virtual, upright, and unmagnified with the distance to the image being the same by symmetry here. You have similar triangles here as, as here. By similar triangles, those two distances have to be the same. So when you look in a mirror, if the mirror is this far away, then your image will appear to be that far behind the mirror, that same distance that you are in front of the mirror. Virtual, upright, and unmagnified, and if, okay, so that's what we just said. They're also left, right, reversed. Uh, there's a great YouTube video on that. It's, it's in my playlist for this chapter, for chapter 25. It's by Physics Girl, an excellent uh, description of why uh, images are left, right, reversed. And the reason is that if I'm pre presenting myself to you like this, um, and then I want to look at myself in a mirror, I have to turn myself around to, to look in the mirror, and I've actually done that left-right reversal, so my right hand becomes my left hand. Um, but nevertheless, these, you, you do see uh, your right hand of, of, the, of the object appears to be a left hand uh, in the image, so it's left-right reversed. And emergency vehicles take advantage of this by reverse lettering, so that the lettering appears to be normal um, when viewed through a, a rear view mirror. All right, you're standing in front of a mirror at the point P shown. There's a light bulb behind a screen. That's this guy here, and here's the screen that you cannot see direct. You can't see the light bulb directly. As you look in the mirror, where does the image of the light bulb appear? Well, this is kind of interesting because it's it's a side to side view here, and we want to know where that image appears. What is the object that's creating the light? And you say, well, it's a light bulb, and so that light bulb is sending out light in all directions. But you're standing here, so we want to find the ray leaving the light bulb that enters your eye, because you're standing at P. And you say, well, looks to me like this ray here is going to hit here, and angle of incidence is angle of reflection, and that's the ray that's going to hit my eye. And any other rays that are close to it will still be able to hit your eye. Well, where's the actual image formed? There's another ray that goes perpendicular to the mirror and then gets reflected right back on itself. And then we can just do the same extension technique that we did before to figure out where the image will be. Well, the, the rays that enter your eye here appeared to have originated from this direction. We also get uh, rays like that if you put your eye over here. So point C is actually where you would see that, that image. It's where those light rays entering your eye appear to have originated from. All right, this is a demonstration of the fraction of your body that you can see in a vertical flat mirror. Here's where I'm going to save you some money. This is a demonstration of the image produced by a flat mirror. As you can see, I'm taking a video of myself through a small mirror. It's about a foot wide and a foot and a half or so tall. And you can see um, up to the top of my head through the mirror down to about my belt line. And what I would like to do is to back up and see how much more of myself I'll be able to see as I back up further and further from the mirror. We should be able to see more, right? Okay. So here I am now, uh, more than 10 feet away from the mirror, and you still see 
the, to the top of my head down to about my belt line. In class, we'll talk about why that is true, that the amount that you can see in a mirror is not dependent on how far you are from the mirror. But also a couple things to notice in this demonstration is that the image, my image in the mirror is the same distance behind the mirror that I am in front of the mirror. And that is true as I move further away. As I move further away from the mirror, my image behind the mirror moves further away from the mirror as well. So that is images from a flat mirror. OK, full length versus half length mirrors. If you want uh, a full length mirror to see yourself um, completely in a mirror, you need a mirror that goes from floor to, floor to your height, right? Wrong. The, um, you actually only need a mirror that's half your height. And if placed on the wall in exactly the right position, you'll be able to see your whole body with a mirror that's only half your height. How so? So here's the, uh, the object. And she's standing in front of a mirror. And by the way, for these experiments, for the uh, video that we just watched, and for this particular experiment to work right, you have to have a flat horizontal floor and a mirror that's exactly vertical. So, so here she is. Here's the object. And how is she going to see herself? She sees herself by seeing the rays that have been reflected by the room lights from the various parts of her body. So let's, how does she see her feet? Well, her feet send off light rays in all directions. But which ones of those light rays are the ones that she's able to see? Well, you say, I, I know that. If you take half the distance between her eye and her feet, and so this is the halfway point, then there'll be a ray that leaves there, hits the mirror, specularly reflects, with the angle of incidence equal the angle of reflection, and that ray goes right into her eye. That's how she sees her feet. Uh, to see her knees, um, a ray something like this, et cetera, et cetera, for the rest of her body. Now, how does she see her hair? Well, there's a distance between your eyes and the top of your hair, head. So here's a blow up of that part. To see the top of her hair, there's going to be a ray that hits the mirror halfway between the top of her head, the height of her top of her head, and her eye level. So that ray hits the, the mirror at point P and then reflects back into her eye. So you can actually, so she wants to look at, um, so she's able to see, all she needs is this much mirror from here to there in order for her to be able to see between her eyes and the top of her head. Why? Because if a ray, a ray that comes in from here came from somewhere out there above her head. So she doesn't need this part, of the, this part of the mirror here. She only needs this part between her eye and halfway between her eye and the top of her head. Similarly down here, uh, she needs this part of the mirror This part of the mirror right there allows her to see her eyes. So a ray leaving, leaving her eyes reflects perpendicularly from the mirror and comes back directly to her eye. So she needs that much mirror to see between her eyes and her feet. And she needs this much mirror to see between her eyes and the top of her head. And so there's that little extra piece of mirror that we need right there. Well, how? How big is that mirror? Well, it's half the distance between her eyes and her head, plus half the distance between her eyes and her feet. Well, the distance between her eyes and her head, plus the distance between her eyes and her feet is her entire height. And we need exactly half of that distance. So this mirror is half her 
height. And, but you have to place it in such a way that, that the, the top of the mirror is halfway between her eyes and the top of her head. Now that works great for her, but if you get a uh, six foot six football player in there, he's not gonna be able to see, it, that mirror won't be placed, nor will it be quite long enough for that football player. So basically what you're gonna do in saving money on your, on your mirrors in your home, Find the shortest person in your home and figure out where that mirror needs to be placed and how big it is. Find the biggest person in your home, find the mirror and where it needs to be placed, and then, and then make your mirror in such a way that it'll cover all those bases. You never need to take a mirror all the way to the floor.